sorry I've been missing for a week. I ended up getting sick. Apparently uh, flu season is not over this year, so that was a bummer. Uh, so I had to spend a week recovering, but I am starting to feel better. And we're having a rainy, gloomy day here in Chicago, so I'm kind of bummed that I haven't been outside in a while, and I'm missing my beach, and usually on days when I just feel kind of blah, I like to get my sea glass out. Um, I still had my batch from my beach birthday party that I brought home, and it's been washed, but I haven't really done anything with it, so I've got it laid out. So I'll give you my sea glass haul today from that last beach trip, and then today we're going to discuss cobalt blue sea glass. And that is one of the most coveted colors in the sea glass world, and it is considered a rare color. So I did find two pieces of that while I was on the beach last time, so I thought we would start with that color. And then I'm going to be doing a series of Sea Glass 101 where I go through all of the different colors and the history of them. Um, I will teach you where to find sea glass, um, what time of the day is best, uh, that sort of thing. So for anybody that doesn't know a lot about sea glass and wanted to, wants to know more or they know a little bit but wanted to know more of the history of the colors and that sort of thing, I hope you find this series helpful and interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and show you first my sea glass haul from the last beach trip. We'll go through what I found and then I'll head into the cobalt. Okay, so this is all of the stuff I found on the beach with my friends last time, and they all also went home with a bag of their own sea glass. We all found enough to be happy. There was plenty for everybody. So on this sheet of paper, we've got all of our Kelly greens, uh, lime green, there's an olive green there, um, a soft green up here, all different shades. And then I did find a bottleneck, and then we move into our um, seafoam green type colors down here. And then this was a fun little find. Um, there was a bunch of these decorative rocks on the beach. I'm sure somebody just dumped them there. They didn't wash up. You can tell that they're still shiny. Um, they have not been tumbling in the waves like the sea glass. If these were to be left in the lake for a long period of time, they would come out frosted and looking like sea glass. But I decided to pick them up anyway because I do kind of pick up weird little things that I find as well. And then here's our two cobalt pieces that we found this last trip. Um, this, surprisingly, is also a type of glass and it's called slag glass and usually that is a product of manufacturing so uh, we get a lot of this green color here in the Chicago area and there's also a blue color that washes up and in Michigan there's a town called Leland Michigan and they get a lot of the blue pieces washed up and they call that Leland Blues. So it's a blue slag glass that's named for the area because so much of it washes up there, but we do still get some of that blue slag on this side of the lake as well. Over here we've got our whites. Again, we've got another bottleneck there, bottleneck there, bottleneck here. Actually, this might be a jar because that's a larger size. So this may have been some type of jar. Um, we've got a piece of safety glass here. And it's got a piece of wire in it. And in my sea glass series, we'll go over things like safety glass as well. Down here, we've got our browns and ambers. And I got a rare piece of gray. I, this is only the second piece of gray I've ever found in this area, so it is quite rare in my area. Um, I know other areas it's a little easier to find, but this is only my second piece. And then we've got lavender here. And then this I would categorize as a citron, which is like a yellow-green color. 
which is also on the more rare side. And then down here we have super old pottery pieces. Um, that's a terracotta piece. This is from an old floor tile, probably from a building that was torn down in Chicago. And then these are all just white pieces of pottery, and this is actually called milk glass, so this one's not pottery. Um, you can tell it's it got some shiny qualities to it, and that's how I know it's glass. And that is a different type of glass. So, and then down the middle, I've got just some little doodads that I found, a little drink, drink umbrella, a sparkly heart, and a golf tee. Uh, I do collect random objects on beaches as well. And then in this little cup of water, I put them in water just because um, when they're wet, it is easier to see the colors. I'm having trouble getting it out. Um, I do collect stones and crystals. And this one, let me get it in the light. This one was just a really neat um, rock. So the outside layer, the black, is actually basalt. And the basalt basically has encapsulated this other stone, which is jasper and I believe some um, clear quartz in the middle. So we've got at least three different types of rock in there. So that would be categorized as a conglomerate rock, meaning that it's made up of more than one type of rock. But I thought it was beautiful with that little bit of jasper and quartz coming through the black. Um, and then, very common in our area is quartz. So I got a nice chunk of clear quartz and it's got some crack lines going through it, so it's really pretty. So I'm going to add that to my collection of quartz. Okay, let's get into cobalt and cornflower blue. Where do they come from? How rare are they? Um, how old are they? Uh, we'll start with cobalt. It, um, it's considered a rare color, and Usually it's about one in 500 pieces found will be cobalt, so that's how rare it is. Um, it generally dates back to, um, I believe it goes all the way back to like ancient Egypt where they were using blue glass, but most of the stuff we find on beaches today are going to be dated from the 1800s to 1900s. and. Um, a majority of them used to be old medicine bottles, poison bottles, um, Vicks VapoRub, Noxema, other hand creams, all came in the cobalt blue glass. And cobalt blue glass is made with cobalt oxide, and so that's an additive that they put into clear glass to turn it cobalt blue. And it was on the more expensive side for manufacturing. Um, so, you know, it wasn't, you know, a lot of things weren't made with it just because of the cost. So really it was mostly medicines and creams and that sort of thing. Um, most pieces that are found on beaches are going to date from about the 1880s to the 1950s. So that's one way that you're able to identify the age and origin of your glass is by the color. And I've learned a lot about glass manufacturing just so that I can date pieces that I find on the beach. And, you know, sea glass doesn't always have marks on it anymore, um, but you do find pieces that will have some letters still left on there or bottle bottoms that have marks and using those marks and those clues you can do searches on the internet and find out exactly where that piece came from. If it's just a well smoothed out frosted piece that doesn't have any identifying marks, the color helps us date those. So um, I'm going to be using some cards and a book that were made written by Richard Lamott, and he is very well known in the sea glass world. I actually met him at a sea glass convention and he signed my copy of his book. 
So uh, I'm going to grab the book just so you know what I'm talking about. So the book is called Pure Sea Glass, Richard Lamont, and the photography of the book is by Celia Pearson. And it is an excellent book for um, beachcombers that are just starting out and want to learn about their glass. I obviously um, am already well researched and educated, but I do like to use these materials when teaching other people. Um, so we do have a section on cobalt blue in the book. Some pretty pictures to give you an idea of what we're talking about. And I can show you my signature from Richard Lamont. Come on, camera, focus. There you go. Um, what did he write? Happy hunting for your sea glass. And signed Richard Lamont. And I met him in October of 2013. And it was nice because we got to chat about the marbles in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He is interested in those. Um, so we talked about that for a while. So it was nice to meet him. It was a cool experience and I do like using his materials to teach other people. Um, but I also have a set, let me grab the box, of his cards that go along with the book and these help identify glass and teach you where all the colors come from. So I'm going to be using these just um, as tools today. Uh, he's got a rarity guide card here. Come on. Focus. Focus. I don't know if I can get this to focus properly. Um, but these are the rare colors down here and you can see the cobalt blues down here. So they're not considered extremely rare, um, but the cornflower blue that I'm also going to talk about is considered more rare than cobalt. It was used less often than the cobalt glass. So we'll start, so here's the cobalt blue card. And on the back you can see some examples of those medicine balls that I was talking about. Um, medicine, poison bottles, and then I see some of the Vicks VapoRub bottles. Um, but these cards are nice. It's, it tells you the rarity here, so it says rare. Um, it says the finding ratio, um, which is, I think I gave you the wrong one. For cobalt, it's one in 250 pieces found is cobalt. And then our cornflower is, a, is the other one that's more rare. So I think I swapped those in the beginning. Um, so here is my collection of cobalt and um, cornflower blue. Now I've been beachcombing for a good 10 years and this is just about my entire collection. Um, obviously for people that are able to beachcomb daily or more than once a week, they're going to have a bigger collection than me. It is hard for me to get to the beach, uh, especially now that I have a family to take care of. So my collection is probably smaller than some other more regular beachcombers, but you know, in 10 years, this is, this is what I have. So I do covet these pieces. Um, they mean a lot to me. Um, I'm trying to find a good, Good rounded piece for you. And then even when I find pieces that aren't quite what I call cooked, where it's still shiny, still has some edges on it, I still keep those if it's a rare color um, because it's still a good find. I can tell that this one came from the bottom of a Vicks VapoRub container and it just hasn't been in the lake as long as some of these other pieces, so it just wasn't quite tumbled enough, but it still has history and it's still a rare color, so I still keep it. Um, let me see if we have more pictures of where are these, these old bottles. So I do have these are old medicine bottles in cobalt blue. 
and there's here's some more examples. We've got a bottle bottom here, and this might be more of the cornflower blue. I think that is my example. So oh, here. There's some bottle bottoms of the cobalt blue, and I think those are from the Vix and Noxima bottles. So that's just an example of where the color comes from. Um, I do have some glass in its more true form here, too. Um, I believe I picked this up at a flea market. I do like to pick up pieces. Um, where the glass is in its original state, just so I have something to compare to the sea glass. So I picked this up, and this is a Lowell Hand Cream Deodorant um, Blue Gem Cream. So probably a like a face or body cream, and uh, I believe this one dates the 1940-ish. Um, but it looks like a little hat. Kind of a, a weird container, but I thought it was neat, so I picked that up just to have on hand. Now this piece I dug up in a forest. Sometimes I come across old... Um, one forest has like almost an old neighborhood that disappeared and was buried, and they had a dump, and I found a whole bunch of glass, and this is a piece I found, so this is probably another hand cream, face cream type container. So this one is not sea glass, but I do go and dig up bottles if I can find old dump sites. Um, so I'm just using that as an example of, of where the sea glass comes from before it ends up in the lake. So, you know, it starts as this, ends up as this. So that is the process. Um, so you know, it's neat to know the history on these pieces and that they can go all the way back to the 1800s, but most of these cobalts are going to be like 1940s to 60s, um, so that's what most of my pieces are. So um, the next color is the, where did I put the card, the cornflower blue. That is a little bit lighter than the cobalt. And like I said, it was not made as often. And it also uses the cobalt oxide, but they just put less of that in to get a lighter color. So it was the same manufacturing process and the same pigment that was used. Um, I did forget to tell you with the cobalt blue, um, so 98% of the cobalt blue is from bottles. So your medicine bottles and stuff like I talked about. There is like 2%-ish that is art glass where maybe statues or things in people's houses, decorative items, that sort of thing. With the cornflower blue, it's 80% from bottles and 20% from tableware. Uh, I've talked a little bit about depression glass in the past, that will be a whole nother video, but um, tableware from the depression era, some of it came in the cornflower blue, so it, it could be from bottles or tableware. The bottles were generally milk of magnesia bottles, and that's the most popular, and um, that, I believe is also in 1900s when those Milk of Magnesia bottles were made. So here's an example of the Milk of Magnesia and the tableware. Camera does not want to play nice today. There we go. Oh, uh, what did I forget? I've got little prompters back here so I didn't forget stuff. So the rarity of the um, cornflower blue is 1 in 500 and the cobalt blue is one in 250 pieces. So the lighter color is more rare. Um, I do not have an example of a full uh, cornflower blue bottle to show you, but I, I'll show you some of my sea glass pieces. 
That might be even a little lighter than cornflower blue. Um, that might be considered a powder blue, and I'm honestly not sure the origin of the powder blues. Um, maybe an art glass for decorative decorative items. Um, trying to find a good piece of cornflower blue. There is a light piece of cornflower blue. Um, Actually, I see in my little plate here, I've got a piece of cobalt that has the S on it from a VIX container. So that one has identifying marks. I know that came from a VIX container because I see the S on there. So those pieces are neat when you still have the identifying marks on them. So that is my spiel on the blues, and I'll go ahead and turn the camera around and show you my whole little collection here so you can see it better. So this is my whole collection of blues, you can see the, the more powder blues, and the cornflower blue, and then the dark cobalt blues. my tiny little collection. Okay, so that is my sea glass spiel for today. I hope you found it interesting, and if you're somebody that was trying to learn more about sea glass, I hope it helped you out, and I wish you good luck on the beaches if you're a beachcomber searching for beautiful blues. Please subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!